One of the useful things we get out of these conformational analyses of acyclic alkanes like ethane, propane, and butane are these energy values associated with destabilizing interactions between groups that occur as a result of these bond rotations, things like torsional strain and steric interactions when groups are eclipsing or in a gauche orientation. Four kilojoules per mole for an HH eclipsing interaction, for example, and 3.8 kilojoules per mole for a CH3-CH3 gauche interaction. But the question arises, what does this actually mean in practical terms? How much energy is 4 kilojoules? How much energy is 1 kilocalorie? You might have a thermodynamic sense of that in terms of, you know, 1 calorie is defined as the energy needed to heat up 1 gram of water by 1 degree Celsius. But what does this mean for organic reactivity and the populations of, for example, anti and gauche conformers at equilibrium? You know, how much of a penalty is four kilojoules, is it enough to make the gauche conformer pretty much non-existent relative to the anti-conformer, or is there a significant amount of gauche conformer around? The point of this video is to provide some perspective on the relationship between energy, kinetics, and chemical equilibrium. There are theoretical relationships here that you're familiar with from your introductory chemistry courses more than likely, and we're not going to do any calculations here. I'm going to show you some tables, though, that will give you a sense of how much various energy values are worth in terms of rate and equilibrium populations of these different conformers. One of the things we'll notice is that a little bit of energy goes a long way. Um, 5 kilocalories per mole or 20 kilojoules per mole is a lot of energy if we're talking about, for example, the effect on the equilibrium constant. This causes a very, very high or very, very small equilibrium constant, 20 kilojoules per mole. All right, let's start with the kinetic question, though. How fast is bond rotation? We've alluded to the, this idea that it's very fast in most, uh, for example, acyclic uh, alkanes where the single bonds can pretty much freely rotate. But there is an activation barrier. The energy difference between staggered and eclipsed conformations is an activation barrier. If you've heard of reaction coordinate diagrams, these conformational potential energy diagrams look a lot like those, where to go from a staggered to an eclipsed conformation, the eclipsed conformation looks like a transition state, and that energy gap is an activation energy or an activation barrier. So what we can do to get a sense of the kinetics is apply the Arrhenius equation to the activation er uh, barrier, which we could call E sub A or delta G double dagger to emphasize that the eclipsed conformation is a transition state. And if we do that, and we think of this as a first order process, because for a conformational change, it pretty much is, only one molecule is involved. Right? We can calculate the rate constant and the half-life for rotation based on the activation barrier. And this table gives you a sense of that in kilocalories per mole. So one kilocalorie per mole, very small. The half-life is on the order of femtoseconds, 10 to the negative 12. We start getting into, I think, interesting territory around 10 kilocalories per mole, where the half-life is now in microseconds. When you're up at 15 kilocalories per mole, milliseconds. 20 kilocalories per mole, you're up at a half-life of seconds. Now, most single bond rotations are living in this 5 kilocalorie per mole range. Single bond rotations. So our half-life is nanoseconds. This is happening billions of times per second, basically. So extremely, extremely fast on the time scale of manipulating chemicals and even running certain types of analytical experiments like NMR spectroscopy experiments, which we'll touch on later in the course. Now, we will so, uh, shortly encounter a conformational change that is actually much slower than single bond rotation because it involves multiple single bond rotations happening together in a cyclic structure, the so-called cyclohexane chair flip. That's much slower because single bonds have to move in concert. They have to move together to flip a cyclohexane chair, and your half-life there is up in the microsecond to millisecond territory.
Beyond that, we've got chemical reactivity. So something like 20 kilocalories per mole or 25 kilocalories per mole is a typical activation barrier for a chemical reaction. And something like glow stick luminescence is a nice visual indicator of this. How long does a glow stick last? Or how long does it take for a glow stick to go from its initial brightness to half its initial brightness? There you're on the seconds to minutes scale where your activation barrier is between 20 and 25 kilocalories per mole, say. So this gives you a sense of the difference between conformational changes, which are generally quite fast, relative to chemical reactions, which are much, much slower. If we want to think about the equilibrium amounts of, say, the staggered contramers, the gauche and anti-contramers for something like butane, well then we need to think about the relationship between the free energy difference between these contramers, which we've already seen, and the equilibrium constant, which is a measure of the ratio of, say, the product anti-conformer to the reactant gauche conformer at chemical equilibrium. And this relationship is one you've hopefully seen in your introductory course as well, where the equilibrium constant depends exponentially on the free energy difference between reactants and products. So a tiny change in delta G is going to cause a very big change in K exponential growth, essentially, as delta G changes. And this table gives you a sense of that. So say the delta G is negative 1 kilocalorie per mole. The value of K at that at 25 degrees C is then about 5. And if we translate that into a percent product in the reaction mixture or in the mixture of the compound in the case of different conformers, we've got about 85% of the more stable product quote unquote conformer. Uh, confirmation. At negative 2 kilocalories per mole, K is up to about 29. And this 29 to 1 ratio corresponds to about 97% product at 25 degrees C. At the seemingly small energy difference of only 4 kilocalories per mole, K is up at 862 at 25 degrees C. And this corresponds to 99.9% .9 product. And of course, beyond that, you're just at 99.99 and pretty much 100% product. Um, beyond this, about negative 5 uh, kilocalories per mole, say. In the particular case of anti versus gauche butane, the energy difference is 3.8 kilojoules per mole, or 0.91 kilocalories per mole. And we can model that by saying, all right, if we call the zero of energy, the product anti-conformer, the reactant gauche conformer, is about 0.91 kilocalories per mole higher in energy. And if we do the math using this equation and 25 degrees Celsius as the temperature and the ideal gas constant there, we come up with an equilibrium constant of 4.7, meaning at equilibrium, in an equilibrium in, in a sample of butane at chemical equilibrium, there are about five molecules of anti-conformer for every one molecule of gauche conformer. So not a negligible amount of gauche conformer, but the anti-conformer is definitely predominating. And as you, as you might imagine, as these groups get bigger, this energy difference grows, and the K gets bigger, and the anti-conformer becomes even more and more biased. And so this is one reason we draw organic structures in this zigzag form, right? For these very large molecules, say I had, you know, tert butyl groups next to each other like this, the anti-conformer here is going to be far and away the most important to consider uh, because, let me fix this up a little bit, say I had two tert butyl groups here and here, the anti-conformer with respect to rotation around this bond is going to be very, very favored over the gauche conformer due to this exponential dependence of K on the energy difference.